Welcome back to Italy. We're Brandon and Alyssa. This is our first time to Rome and we're only here for two days, but we plan to make the most of it. Last video, we showed you our first 24 hours. Everything we ate, saw, and spent. $156 to be exact. Today is day two. There's still quite a bit to see and so much more to eat. We're staying at the Urban Garden Hotel, about 20 minutes outside the city center. This hotel was great. The cost is $46 a night plus $8 a night city tax. We do have to take the metro into the city, but we purchased the 24-hour pass yesterday and still have a few hours left to use it. First things first, food. We got Fior Me Norma, I think is how you say it, getting a porchetta sandwich, which is something you have to try in Rome. It's like slicing all the meats to order, slicing the bread, cooking it all freshly made, which is good because most of these places, it's typically like pre-made and ready to go. So he's doing it to every order, which is really unique. So I totally biffed it in there. There were so many options and I decided that I wanted two, that I got two but I didn't get the porchetta sandwich, which is what we came for. But these are pretty hearty sandwiches. They look really well made and it was only 12 euro. Hmm. This one's bread, eggplant, and salami only. <laughs> the eggplant on there is roasted to perfection and they did put some olive oil on there. So there's enough fat to coat your mouth so it's not totally dry. The crunch of the bread is phenomenal. Also, this is a very fatty cut of salami. I like it. Uh, this one was called 13 Marzo, and it has cured meat, sun-dried tomatoes, some sort of cheese, and like a roasted broccolini. Mmm. There's an artichoke spread as well. This thing is like the gift that keeps on giving. It's like every bite you take, it's like you get a piece of artichoke, a piece of cheese, a different cured meat. There's some garlic, sun-dried tomatoes. You get that olive oil. It's bomb. Not too crowded. We are at the Pantheon, one of Rome's oldest structures. It is free to enter, but you should make a reservation on the weekends or holidays. The Pantheon was built in 126 AD as a place of worship for the Roman gods. It is a magnificent ancient temple defined by its revolutionary domed ceiling. To this day, the structure is the largest unreinforced concrete dome on the planet. Today, the Pantheon stands as a symbol of Roman architectural genius and continues to attract visitors who marvel at its grandeur and historical significance. The Pantheon survived the barbarian raids where no other structures in Rome survived. So cool. This thing old. So pardon my Italian, but if you're hitting the Pantheon, make sure to make the short walk over to Basilica Sant'Andrea della Valle. <laughs> the inside of that place is beautiful. It's also free to enter and nobody was in there. So it's a very tranquil way to escape the crowds and still enjoy some of that classic Roman church vibes. What's it called? Sazzo di Oro. There's a sit-down restaurant as well as a quick cafe. They have a dollar espresso in there, so that's pretty good. And vending machines on the outside. Everyone says they have to get one of these when you come to Rome. Do you know what it's called? Marzion <laughs> It looks like a, a sticky bread filled with whipped cream. Maritazzo. Uh, it feels more like a bun or like a bread than it does like a donut. Uh, I am a huge fan of this. Surprisingly enough, the bread is like almost a little savory, like maybe eggy and a hint of like salt. And then with that cream, the cream's not overly salty. It's just very fatty and like creamy. It's a good combination. It's perfect with the coffee.
We are now enjoying the views at one of Rome's most beautiful plazas, La Piazza Navona. This whole place used to be an ancient stadium and uh, it flooded over and then they built this plaza as like a giant marketplace. In a few weeks, this is gonna be the place of one of the biggest Christmas markets in Rome. We've never been to the Christmas markets in Rome, so if you've been, leave us a comment, let us know how they are, maybe we'll make a return trip in December. There's so many fountains in Rome, and I love all of the statues outside them. They're so huge. Like, I can't even explain how big they are. There are water fountains like these to refill your water bottles all over the city. Free water. <laughs> One of the best things you can do in Rome, and in any city for that matter, is just walk around. There's so much to see here, and so many amazing winding roads and back alleyways. Without a map, just take a stroll, and you're bound to have a good time. So some sort of art market we've stumbled upon. Whenever we're just wandering around the city, we always like to pull up a map and find some sort of a cool green space or like a church. And then we will just kind of take a random path towards the that direction without any care if we ever make it to the destination or not. We find that you end up stumbling on things that you never knew existed in a city that don't pop on a map and that aren't necessarily on any tour guides. So it's your best way to get like a locals insider view of how people are actually living. make our way to Vatican City. So let's go see what that's about. We were gonna bus here, but I guess we decided to walk. So you do need a ticket to get inside St. Peter's Basilica to see the Sistine Chapel. Tickets are like $30, which we don't have in our budget right now. And we also don't really have the time today. So we're gonna skip it. There is this barricade around the plaza area, which you don't need a ticket to enter. You can just go around the barricade and get like a free up close look at the outside. And you can see like the little balcony where the Pope comes out and speaks to everyone. It's really, really beautiful. Like definitely worth it, even if you don't go inside. They've set up all these chairs here for the Holy Day of the Poor, which will be a free mass. You just have to register for a ticket on November 13th with the Pope himself. And if you're lucky, you can find a nice tunnel to stroll down just outside of Vatican City. I mean, how else can you have an experience like this one? Thank you so much. Easy peasy. Getting a ticket in the city was really easy. We just went into a little souvenir shop and we said we need two bus tickets and they're $1.50 each. And you just had a stack of them, you rip some off. And then when you get on the bus, you have to validate it. And then it's good for a hundred minutes after you scan. Um, I think the only place to get the like all day pass is at a kiosk, but we didn't even use it all day yesterday. So 150 ticket at a time is fine. And this can get you on the bus and the Metro as long as it's within a hundred minutes. This is Trastevere district, where one of our friends said to come and walk around and look for some bars and some food. So let's do it. This is a really cool neighborhood. There's like winding alleyways with like hipster bars and pizza shops, things like that. We stopped at Trapezino because we saw a sign for soup. That's me. <laughs> so we're gonna pick a bar with it. We got it. I forgot I gave him my name. So we stopped at Trapezino for what is called a soupli, and it's like an arancini, sort of. It's like a fried risotto ball, and they're stuck with things. We ordered one classic. I don't know what that means. We also ordered another one of a word that I can't pronounce. I obviously don't know what's in that one. We found the perfect little cubby hole in the alleyway to enjoy our soupli. This is one, and this is one. They are different shapes, but it looks like some sort of a breadcrumb batter they're deep fried all right i'm gonna try the long one first Ooh. oh it's cheesy this is what the photo looks like so i think this might be the classic one <laughs> they just switched to the wide angle lens it's good it's um like a tomato based arancini arancini that i've had before is more like a creamy risotto and this is more similar to like a pizza tomato base it does have the like ricey risotto and that cheese in the middle 
The breadcrumbs are really crunchy and it's really flavorful. I'm pumped on it. It tastes like a, a good pizza hot pocket. <laughs> So I'm just gonna bite into this one. This is the mystery souply that we have no idea what's inside of it. So I'm just gonna go for it. Oh, very similar. Oh, there's tomato base too. It might be artichoke. Mmm. So I love that there's like a ball of cheese in these because it's like a cheese bomb wrapped inside the crunchiest exterior. And like that tomato risotto is sweet and savory. This is like just an amazing to-go snack. I don't know what it is. It's a little different. There's like a little more vegetable in it or something. Very similar, but maybe we'll figure out what the word is and I can post it in the video. Similar, but a little bit different flavor. It's still good. I've solved the mystery. There is zucchini in this one and not in the other one. There's also less cheese in this one. So that is a super great snack on the go. The crunchy exterior, I can't explain how crunchy it is. Like every single bite, it just explodes with flavor. The filling is perfect. It is the absolute ideal snack to just grab and go for two euros. I would eat this all the time if I lived here. Pretty much every street can be walked on or driven on. <laughs> So we had a little difficulty finding a spot for a meat and cheese plate, but we finally stumbled upon one, Pizza Carlo it's called, and we got a couple glasses of wine while we wait. decide to come to this place, know a couple things. It is like a college hangout, super dive bar vibes. Everyone knows their role. Uh, so make sure when you come in, you go to the counter, you order your drinks, you get the receipt, you go to the bartender, you tell him what you want. He will furnish your drinks and then you will run out. Come to this plaza, drink your drink. Uh, there's pizza around the corner, take in the band. Good vibes all around, but uh, it was a little bit stressful. It was like the angriest bartender ever. He like yelled at me because I was like, my ticket said two beers and one Amaro or whatever. So I was like, Fernet? He's like, 750, only Fernet? What the f? <laughs> Peroni and a Fernet? You're like, we got two of these large Peronis too. 750 for all that. The first Fernet of Europe? Oh, it's so good. <laughs> It's an absolute vibe. Cheers. I don't know. I, I made a panic purchase. I bought some cold pizza apparently, but it was only $1.50 a slice. And this one has they didn't heat potato it? on it. No, I don't know. I just took whatever they were willing to give me. Mmm. Great. <laughs> okay. So the cold potato pizza is not my jam. I also think that I was mistaken in thinking that all these people were eating this pizza standing outside of here. They're waiting for something else. Yeah. However, this uh, cheese pizza is kind of like a dollar pizza from New York, but a little bit souped up. I can dig on this, though. This is like literally the exact reason we bring the pocket sauce. At times like this. Any food that's not great gets this. <laughs> Whenever you put hot sauce on anything, it makes it... I don't know, three levels better. So this went from a three to a six. <laughs> so there you have it. We are all wrapped up in Rome, Italy. This is what we spent. No, it'll be down here. This is what we it's spent. over here, whatever <laughs> it is. If you like videos like this, please like, subscribe, check us out. We're gonna do a lot more European travel and we're gonna spend as little money as possible along the way.
see you in Malta. Oh.